an African lifestyle. Welcome to Pan African Lifestyle, where we rep the motherland. We post content regularly and invite you to subscribe and share. If you're a pal, that's a Pan African Lifestyler. Kagame is actually one of Africa's <coughs> biggest problems because Congo is the biggest dissettlement of Africa that causes Africa never to unite. And Kagame is the reason why we've got the Congolese struggle. The, DR the DRC, my, my basic understanding is that it's, it's the wealthiest country in Africa, on the continent on the con from in a the world perspective. In the world, yeah. It's the wealthiest country in the world from a natural resources perspective. 100%. And you're saying Opol Kakame has a part to play in that? Yeah, uh, people don't understand that we always hear about the Rwandan genocide. Mm. The Rwandan genocide was started by Paul Kagame. And he started the Rwandan genocide because he wanted to take power by force in a country that would have never elected him into power because he came from the minority Tutsis who used to be supported by the colonizer and used to be the administrators on behalf of the colonizer. So for Paul Kagame to come back as a Tutsi to come and take power in Rwanda, mm. he needed to do something. And what he did is he started the genocide. He started the genocide by bringing down a plane that had two presidents, Hutu presidents, the Burundian president and the Rwandan president. Paul Kagame and his uh, RFP forces shot down the plane when it was landing back in Rwanda from actually an, a, an AU meeting. Mm. And when that plane came down, then it inflamed the Hutu people who knew that they were uh, uh, RFP fighters who were trying to take war, uh, 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 power by force. Mm. And so they began to fight against Tutsi people who they felt wanted to come and take over power. While they were doing that, Paul Kagame himself sent his forces to murder his own Tutsi people on a whole scale level to make it look like a genocide so that he could then have his forces come into Rwanda and take over power militarily under the guise of stopping a genocide against Tutsis. These are all things that are factual. Well, well documented. Jeez. It is actually something that the International Court of Justice wanted to persecute him for mm. and then the Americans covered up for him and the French covered up for him so that it wouldn't come out. But poor Kagame came into power by murdering his own people. Then when he did that, he then took Laurent Kabila, who was now living in Rwanda, mm. to go and take over power from Babu to Sese Seko. These are the leaders in the DRC? This was in the DRC. And the arrangement that he had with Mabutu is once you're in power, you need to bring some of my own people mm. into your system. And the reason why he wanted to bring his own people into the system is that the Tutsis see themselves as a superior people to Bantus. And so they want to reinstitute something called the Mapororo Tutsi Empire that is going to rule over Central Africa and the Great Lakes. Mm -hmm. Because if you look where they came from in, in, in Uganda, Museveni is Tutsi. And he is the one who trained together with people like Paul Kagame in Tanzania together with our liberation fighters. Mm. And when they came from those liberation camps, then Museveni went and took power from Obote and then he put people like Kagame and other and, and, the, and, and the Hutus and the Tutsis into his army and intelligence. They then started murdering non-Tutsis non who wanted power mm. in, 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 in Uganda because they were majorities. And that's how um, um, Museveni becomes the president of Uganda as a Tutsi. And then he begins to assist Kagame together with the Europeans, the Americans, to then create a force that is going to take power in, 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 in Rwanda. <coughs> and then they must take power in Rwanda, instill a Tutsi in Burundi, and instill a Tutsi in Congo. So when they then succeeded in getting Mabu, uh, um, 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 uh, um, what do you call him? Kabila into power. Kabila refused to put Tutsis into his government. Mm. And when he refused, then Kagame and Museveni then sent their armies and rebels into Congo with an intention to remove 
um, Kabila. Kabila. Kabila then ran to Sadak. Mm. And that time Sadak had an organ or the military uh, uh, institution was called the organ, which was being headed by Mugabe. And he said, listen, they want to overthrow me. And he gave them the reasons why they want to overthrow. Mugabe sent a, 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 a fact-finding mission mm. that it consisted of Zambians, Namibians, Angolans, South Africans, and everybody from Sadek region. Mm. And he realized that this was actually a problem. So they went to Uganda, they went to Rwanda, they couldn't find Museveni when they went to, 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 to Uganda, they couldn't find Kagame when they went to Rwanda, but they got information that there was going to be an overthrow of uh, Kabila, and then the UN was going to be forced to actually come up with a policy that says Congo must be breaking, broken down into five countries. Jeez. The five countries would then be easier to loot for mm. the West through Uganda, Rwanda, and their own people that they would have placed within the Congolese system. Then Zambia and Zimbabwe, uh, Zambia and Zimbabwe came up with a counter proposal, but they also sent the armies of the Namibians and the Angolans to go and stop Kabila, uh, uh, Kagame from overthrowing Kabila. Mm. They were able to repel Kagame and Museveni's troops. Milton, what about you? Um, you're dealing with uh, uh, General Yowe Kaguta Museveni. Yes, sir. It's much more realistic, actually, to say that General Museveni and Paul Kagame are unindicted war criminals. And these are not just my words. Uh, this is based on the actions that they've taken and what has been investigated and the facts that have been uh, put together. So let's look at um, when uh, Cloud mentioned the figure of six million. Uh, he was actually referring to the Congo, I believe. That's the estimate of people that have been killed in the Congo based on the wars, the displacement of people, uh, the diseases that have uh, occurred as a result of the multiple invasions of Congo mm -hmm. by the armies of Uganda and Rwanda under uh, General Museveni and Kagame, respectively. And this was investigated and well documented exhaustively. And in the case of Uganda, and this is one thing that might come as news to some people in media, when in fact it should not be. Uganda was actually found liable of war crimes in the Democratic Republic of Congo by the International Court of Justice. Correct. This is rarely mentioned in any of the corporate media. This was serious. Evidence was heard. The Congo took the matter to the court. Uganda brought its lawyers. The evidence was heard and a ruling was made by the International Court of Justice, that Uganda was indeed liable for war crimes, atrocities, rapes, mass rapes, massacres, plunder of resources. Uganda was ordered to pay to Congo reparations of six billion to ten, to 10 billion dollars uh -huh. in 2005, and not a dime has been paid. But then what did the Congo do? The Congo referred the same matter to the International Criminal Court, the ICC. And the ICC launched its own investigation. And interestingly, on June 8, 2006, the Wall Street Journal reported in a rarely mentioned but very important article that Uganda's president himself, General Museveni, contacted then UN Secretary General Kofi Annan and asked him to block that investigation. In other words, the president, a sitting president of a country was interfering with a criminal investigation. And now the question is, what happened? Who blocked that investigation? Because going by reason and logic, one would imagine that using the same set of facts that the ICJ used to determine that Uganda had indeed been liable for war crimes, the ICC might have ended up indicting General Museveni. And that's why I say, as far as I'm concerned, I believe he is an unindicted war criminal. And the question is, who blocked that investigation? But how can you be sure that that information is accurate? Thank you for asking that question. If I am a president and a major newspaper like the Wall Street Journal says that I contacted the, the Secretary General of the UN 
and ask him to block a criminal investigation by the ICC, at the very least, I would sue the Wall Street Journal. At the very least. Or I would make a statement denying what was published in the Wall Street Journal. And that never happened. That has never happened up to date. He's never denied it, and he's never uh, challenged the Wall Street Journal or filed a lawsuit against the Wall Street Journal. Mr. Paul Kagame, we are living in 2023. That means technology has helped us having every device to check history, geography, and politics on a daily basis. Do not lie, Mr. Paul Kagame. The main reason for the presence of your army in the Democratic Republic of the Congo is not because you feel that Rwanda is not safe. No. It's because you are working for some Western countries. First of all, remember, you got into power, Mr. Paul Kagame, not democratically. No. You got into power undemocratically. They imposed you by the West after creating a tragedy in Rwanda. It was a mission and a contract. And in return, you signed a contract that once you are in power in Rwanda, you would give the Congo minerals to all those Western politicians and the Western companies. And that's what you've been doing for 25 years, period. So do not lie that Congolese people, they always plan to attack Rwanda. Let me tell you, Paul Kagame, there is nothing in Rwanda that the Congolese people can go and die for. Nothing. But you, Paul Kagame, are using Rwandan youth to come and die in the Congo because of the Congo minerals. Once they get into the Congo, they steal coltan, cassiterite, Wolframite, gold, and many other minerals. That's the main reason you've been busy to attack the Congo for minerals, first of all. And the more you eat, the more you want, as this English diction says. Now your plan is to grab some land because Congo land has a lot of minerals. You want not to grab Congolese territories because the, hand, the underground is full of minerals, Paul Kagame. That's why you've been creating all these problems about uh, Rwanda phone, Congolese who speak in Rwanda, uh, Banyamurenge, they deserve to be in the Congo, they are Congolese, they are not Rwandan. It's a long story, Paul Kagame. I'm going to make a video next time to prove you wrong. The guys who are killing Congolese people, or have been killing the Congolese people today, are two. You, Paul Kagame, president of the Rwanda, and Yoweri Museveni, the president of Uganda. You've been on a mission for 25 years and more to destabilize the Democratic Republic of the Congo so that you can have access to its territory and loot the minerals. Rwanda and Uganda have become two hubs for the mafia, international mafia, where all the minerals stolen in the Congo are taken. So Kigali and Kampala are two hubs where all the mafiosi from around the world, they go to get the minerals you steal from the Congo and take them from there. And in return, they provide you with security, they train your armies, and they give you extra money in different programs. Because Rwanda and Uganda are poor countries. Nobody is stupid in the Congo to go attack Rwanda or Uganda and die for nothing in a poor country. No. This is stupidity. But you, Kagame, you've been sending Rwandan youth 
and Museveni have been, has been sending uh, Ugandan youth to come and die in the Congo, not for nothing, because there are a lot of minerals. So we need to be serious. The world has changed. Every report, even from the United Nations, Paul Kagame, we can read one of the, the most powerful and famous report that says even the M23, every rebel, uh, uh, I mean, rebel movement that comes, with, uh, that, that keeps coming from Rwanda, Uganda, everything has been, have been created by you. Everything has been created by the Rwandan government and the Ugandan government. Remember, there is the mapping report that describes year after year the Rwanda soldiers' movement in the Congo. The name of Rwandan soldiers, high-ranked soldiers, and the cities and towns and villagers they destroyed in the Congo and the kind of minerals they stole from the Congo. We know you've been displacing Congolese people from their villages and towns, even cities. Not for the pleasure, not you feel that Rwanda and Uganda, they are facing insecurity from the Congo, no. Because you are so greedy. The main problem is that Paul Kagame and Yoweri Museveni, you are two dictators. Two greedy, wicked dictators who've been working for the West and in return they pay you some money and they provide you weapon and security. To cut the long story short, you are the house Negroes. Thanks for tuning in to Pan-African Lifestyle. Share your thoughts in the comments section and follow us on TikTok and Instagram at Pan-African Lifestyle to be inspired. For awesome PAL merch, check out panafricanlifestyle.com slash shop. Keep repping the motherland. Pan-African Lifestyle.